December and everyone has shopping to do for the holidays. But how they choose to shop has evolved over the years. Coming up, Kylie McFarlane looks a bit at the past and future of the mall and its impact on our area. Savannah Rodriguez discusses the big picture of the holiday shopping season as it relates to the health of the economy. And Brooke Brennan steps into the spotlight with a new business aiming to develop local talent. Stay tuned, you're watching Roar TV. Good morning, Oviedo. Today is Thursday, December 12th, 2019. I'm Tyler. And I'm Brooke. Today we're on location at the Oviedo Mall, a well-known social spot for Oviedo residents. Built in 1998, this shopping center, along with virtually every other regional mall in America, has seen its share of difficulties through the economic downturn in 2008 and the decline of department stores. Today we're exploring the changes, both present and future, to this mall. But first, let's get today's show started. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In early 2017, a Los Angeles firm called International Growth Group purchased the Oviedo Mall property. And they understood that with the rise of online shopping, malls have to reshape their identity if they plan to last through the third decade of the 21st century. So the past three years have seen several new openings from Oviedo's first brewery to the teen favorite District Eaton Play. Kylie McFarland peers through the storefront for a closer look at our hometown shopping plaza. The Oviedo Mall, a well-known feature of the Oviedo landscape. The mall opened its doors in 1998 and very quickly fulfilled a need in the Oviedo community. When it, was first, when it first opened, that's what it really became. It became the gathering place, you know, in Oviedo. I think what it did, it complemented, it brought something that the city had not had that it needed. You know, people didn't have to travel 30, 40 minutes to go shopping or to go to a restaurant anymore, or to go to a movie. You didn't have to do that anymore. It was right here at home. When the mall first opened, it was a time when department stores brought in business for the smaller stores of the mall. Department stores across the country are closing. And that's a combination of two things, actually. Originally, it was Walmart that was killing the department stores. And Amazon, that just put the nails in the coffin. But the reality is department stores will no longer be viable anchors for malls. So we have to change the way malls work. However, when the mall first opened, it fought for its department stores. There was a competition for the department stores. You see, Waterford Lakes wanted to have the mall there. Oviedo wanted the mall here. The key was who was going to get the department stores. Oviedo won the battle, but kind of lost the war in some respect, in that we got the department stores. But then Waterford Lakes was very creative, did an open air center with over 2 million square feet of retail. So if you're not a super regional mall, you've got a problem. And although Oviedo is a great mall, it's not a super regional mall, so it has to be changed. It can't be just a, a retail mall. 100% retail doesn't work anymore in malls. With retail not performing like it used to, malls have to find a better way to use their space to fit the needs of the consumers and the community. And now malls really must be mixed juice. What I mean by mixed juice is entertainment, restaurants, residential. We have a co-working team here called Neoware uh, that has seven, uh, 20 or 30 desks that they rent and they do a lot of activities here and they bring a lot of people. There is a movement away from the retail, so to speak. Uh, now with the Sears pad, how it, it's a wide open floor space and it, would, it could really accommodate a variety of different employment type uses. There is a plan in effect right now where the Macy's building is going to come down that's going to be three to four hundred units of, of apartments. Some will be uh, specialty apartments, what they call active adults. Some will be luxury apartments and a hotel. When that happens, the theater will renovate and upgrade all their screens. Right now, they don't have those fancy chairs. They're going to put those in. They're going to renovate every screen here. So on a new long-term lease. When that happens, we're going to get on that 15 acres, another development of condominiums. There's 140 of them playing there. When we start to have 24-7 residential here, it's going to bring a lot of activity here. Having people live there, there's a lot for them to do, you know, 
Uh, it puts people there at the mall who will utilize the services that are at the mall. With so many positive changes for the Oviedo Mall, there certainly is a bright future ahead. For Roar TV, I'm Kylie McFarland, reporting. Even with the changes the center is implementing, traditional retail stores are always going to play some role in the identity of malls. And retail businesses nationwide look specifically to the month of December for an uptick in sales. The success of the holiday shopping season is often considered a measuring stick of economic health. For the rundown on this year's shopping season, let's go to Savannah Rodriguez. With tree lightings and other festive events, many shopping plazas can become social spots in the months of November and December. And getting people out to malls this time of year is crucial for retail businesses. Quite honestly, the holiday shopping season is the most important time for any retail. Basically, November, December, this holiday season is the time in which you are going to make it or break it for the next year, if you think about it. A lot of spending takes place at the holiday season, a lot. If consumers are confident in the uh, markets and in their investments and in their businesses, they tend to spend more. So this is a critical period that economists and investors are gonna be watching. While the tally from this year's shopping season won't be known until early 2020, the National Retail Federation is forecasting approximately a 4% rise in holiday sales. And online sales are expected to increase between 11 to 14%. All of this is fueled by overall positive signs of growth in the U.S. gross domestic product, the value of all goods and services produced by a country. So with a strong GDP, that signals that everything is running very, very well. Along with that, we find that wages increase, therefore spending increases. But not all of that spending finds its way to traditional retail stores. For some students, it's easier to pull out one of these to shop, right here on campus even, rather than drive somewhere and pull out all of these. I like to get things done ahead of time, so I wanted to start probably like a week before Thanksgiving. I started getting all my gifts. Most of it was online. It's a lot easier to do it all in one spot, like Amazon per se, and then it all just comes in one box and then you're done. All you have to do is pick up your phone or sit with your laptop and click, 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 click. You can get your groceries, you can get your toilet paper, you can get a beautiful dress, you can get shoes, you can get a suit, you can get whatever you want. Despite this exodus towards digital shopping, some businesses, like locally owned Rustic Journeys, still see demand for the in-person experience. There's pros and cons of online shopping because it may not be true to size or may not look exactly like it does in the pictures online. The trends specifically, even with our um, business, is folks really want the handmade, they want um, pieces that they can make a connection with and they feel like it's home when they're giving a gift to somebody. It's that warm fuzzy feeling. Trends are always changing no matter what industry you're in. Um, so as far as retail is concerned, I think we might all agree to some degree that the standard mall, that trend is changing. For Roar TV, I'm Savannah Rodriguez. And from competition between businesses to competition between schools, winter sports are underway. Both basketball and soccer recently hosted crosstown rival Haggerty. Riley Finnegan is in studio with this morning's O-Town Sports Report. Good morning, Oviedo. I'm Riley Finnegan with your O-Town Sports Update. On Monday, girls basketball defeated Titusville 64-44. Maisie King led with 25 points and Mandy Turner followed up with 15 points. JV fell 16 to 23. Boys varsity basketball won over Lake Howe 65 to 63. Mamouche Galloway led with 24 points and JD Newman followed with 11. JV also won 73 to 49 and freshmen lost 54 to 49. On Friday, boys soccer faced off against Haggerty at home. Let's go to the highlights for that game. On December 6th, the Oviedo boys soccer team faced off against the Haggerty Huskies. In the first half, Haggerty would be the first to strike with this crossover that ricocheted off the Oviedo goalkeeper and fouled its way to the back of the net to put Haggerty up 1-0. Later in the half, an attempt to clear the ball by the Oviedo goalie would place it in a position for Haggerty to strike from the near the top of the box, giving them a 2-0 lead. Haggerty would later score on an own goal from Oviedo to go up 3. 
Within the first minute of the second half, Oviedo scored a clutch goal, but it was unfortunately not enough and the Lions fell 3-1. With O-Town Sports, I'm Riley Finnegan. Finally, one of the philosophies of the Oviedo Mall is that malls are no longer just about shopping, but experiences. And if you're interested in the experience of performing, then one business here might be worth stepping inside as you walk by. Brooke Brennan gets into character with Penguin Point Productions. Department stores, food courts, and name brand businesses are all things that come to mind when one thinks of a mall. But for Oviedo, a different type of organization has made its mark. I taught theater for 25 years, and uh, in 2005, one of my students wanted to do a, a senior play. So I told the principal, when I told this kid we'd do the show, she said, you can do it at the Fringe Festival, but you can't be Lake Howe High School. You have to call it something else. So we came up with Penguin Point Productions. That was 2005, so in 2018, uh, when I decided to open my own theater, now it's Penguin Point Productions, and it's got its home in the Oviedo Mall. Um, I am the improv instructor here at Penguin Point Productions, uh, which means I kind of obviously teach improvisation uh, to uh, the students here. Uh, it's really nice. Uh, we have all different kinds of levels and experiences here. Uh, so we have people who are honestly taking the class who just want to like break out of their shell and try something new. And then we have people here who are also like in the acting classes. So they're here to kind of help their own skill sets and kind of grow more as like performers and even comedians. What I'm trying to do specifically with my acting classes is to help people get out of their shell and learn to be comfortable on stage. The on-stage opportunities provided to those at Penguin Point Productions are endless, but students are also granted a chance to learn what goes on behind the scenes. Something else special that we offer is uh, student directing opportunities. All of our young company shows have been directed not by me, but by students from my program. I think something else that's helped a lot of my uh, students who come through, both here and when I was uh, teaching high school, is giving them ownership. I think that there's a lot of people who, if they were given the chance, could run a prop shop, could run our scene shop, could help in our costume shop, and so on. And uh, Penguin Point gives them a chance to just feel some ownership of that. Well, I've done quite a bit of volunteer work around Penguin Point Productions, as in setting up the costume shop, as in helping out clearing some makeup, clearing up organizing, a lot of different things. And this is actually the first show that I have seen since it's been basically completed, but from what I have seen, it has turned into something absolutely amazing. For many, Penguin Point Productions is an essential part of their journey into stepping into the spotlight. For Roar TV, I'm Brooke Brennan reporting. As we prepare to embark on a new decade, time will tell what the future has in store for malls throughout America. But we hope today's broadcast gave you a better idea of what the future of our local mall could look like. Remember to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Roar TV. We're down to only one full week until winter break, so finish this semester strong. Until then, I'm Brooke. And I'm Tyler. We'll see you guys back in studio for tomorrow's show. Then on Monday, we're going to be on location in St. Petersburg for a special holiday event. Have a great day.